All right, first of all, Happy New Year to everybody. I was originally going to get this video uploaded yesterday, but because I ran into a bunch of problems, I am going to upload it today and I figured it'd be perfect for a New Year's 2024 startup anyway. And also just a slight disclaimer, this is not a upgrade laptop video at all. This is just a regular laptop that you just take to work and you just use it at to you just basically use it as a daily normal laptop not a gaming laptop so for anybody who might take the title wrong i'm not upgrading anything if anything i'm improving the performance a little bit and getting a little bit better battery life out of the lap out of the device itself so i'm also going to be doing like a tutorial kind of esque thing on how to like install tiny 11 on a windows 8 laptop considering that this thing has a dynamic lock it will prevent anything other than windows 8 unfortunately other laptops you may not run into this issue maybe the exact same laptop that i have might have a different version of bios in it, it has to do with the bios so it is kind of an issue with certain laptops. You will not be able to do it without having like a pa passcode phase. And that's also why I'm doing a setup guide for this is because you're going to run into issues trying to boot into Windows 11 so or Tiny 11. So it also is a security thing. So for instance, if you were to upgrade from Windows 8 to Windows 10 on this thing, it'll be fine because it is signed by Microsoft. But however, if you were to install Windows 10 on it automatically or Windows 11, Tiny 11 is more preferred, then you're going to probably run into some issues with trying to boot into the operating system. The problem is certain laptops like this, especially with the Dell laptops around, the around I think, I don't remember when, when this released, it will have a dynamic lock on that for the reason to, like, for security purposes. So... Basically, in this video, there's going to be a guide on how to bypass that and install Tiny11. And also, the reason why I am doing this with a, a just a regular laptop, because why not? This channel is about just going above and beyond when it comes to these devices and computer. I might actually change my name in general. I'm thinking of a name it's other than my actual Alexander name. But in general... Uh, this will be just a setup guide and also when it comes to like setting up like driver three uh, yes included i'm going to show you guys that it is worth to pick that game up physically if you have a disk drive on your computer and show proof that you actually do not need anything else other than the disk installation and start so the entire beginning of this video is just going to be a disclaimer, just a heads up. If you don't care to watch this, it's it might be 30 minutes. There's also going to be some chapters. I don't know how long this video is going to take. But usually when I do like a setup guide, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It makes a video a little bit longer than it needs to be. Unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. Uh, sometimes my videos do end up being about 40 or 50 minutes. I try to reduce the time, but if you, in case you don't want to go through this, you can like skip to the end. I have chapters, like I said, so feel free to skip across this. And also, in case you guys are curious, this is the current laptop I have. These are the specs that this laptop has. It's out of stock, but this is what I'm currently using. It has four gigs of RAM, I upgraded to six. It has a disk drive. It was originally running Windows 8, so. It's cool. Um, like I said, if this is up your alley, feel free to click off. But if this is up your alley and want to just watch the video just because, cool. If you did like it, give it a like. I'll, uh, now, explanation of why these gaming laptops use up, use up so much battery. The reason why is because of the dedicated GPU inside of the system. It sucks up a lot of battery. You're going to get about 30 minutes out of it. So, say for instance, if you try to disable the the graph like the video driver and uh, disable like the gpu in it you might get about two hours of battery life which is about 30 minutes so the reason why these gaming laptops do not last long at all is because of that i mean the battery could be huge but the the gpus inside it, the gpu inside of it sucks up a lot of battery a lot of these handhelds however 
they they only have like the integrate in basically integrated graphics it doesn't suck up that much battery compared to a lot of these laptops also i'm getting over being sick i sound off because of that reason it sucks um it's dry down in idaho i will be talking more about that i do have a video coming up relating to my plane ride and experience but out of my family's respect i didn't record them i didn't do anything i enjoyed christmas with them didn't want to record them at all i thought about it before but just out of respect for them i just didn't want to do that now about what's going to go on with this video the beginning part like after this disclaimer part is going to be a setup guide on how to bypass the dynamic lock there's like a pass face with the com there's like a command prompt you're going to want to copy over to the internal storage after installing windows so everything will be included into this video again like i said for the fourth time there will be chapters so feel free to skip across this. Now, there's also going to be a like a performance and battery test. The most of the gameplay that you're going to see is going to be on battery. So it's going to be basically on battery saver. I have like I'll be going through all the steps on how to do that as well. But the reason why you're getting lower performance is because like of the battery saving mode being on, but you're getting about a couple hours of battery life. I will be going over that later. Obviously, uh, battery life is very important. So, like I said, if you guys care at all to watch this video, you can definitely watch through. Again, fifth time chapters. And also, I'm going to be showing you a setup for Driver 3 to show, like, there's a reason why you should pick up a hard copy of Driver 3. So, I'll be explaining more throughout the video. Let's just get started on how to set up Windows or Tiny 11 on a Windows 8 laptop. Also, I forgot to mention, I'm going to be doing like a speed test with an SSD versus like a hard drive with Tiny11 on it. This is also the beginning part. I'm going to be basically doing Tiny11 on the current hard drive. I also upgraded it to about 6 gigabytes of RAM. I had an extra stick of RAM laying around. It's DDR3, by the way. So if you guys want to pick up extra stick of RAM, if like depends on your computer, I'm going to be listing a bunch of RAM down in the description as well. So anyway, I went and formatted it. You're going to need some enclosure. Everything's linked down in the description, including the dependencies. And also, you're also going to meet, need Rufus as well. That's very important in order for this process to work. I always use Rufus. Also, in case you're curious, this is where I found Tiny11. Now, like I said, do I recommend using Tiny11? It's optional. I personally want to recommend it for security reasons. I think it's fine, personally. Haven't had any issues at all other than the activate Windows 11 pops up on your computer. So you're going to want to activate Windows. You're going to need to find a way to activate it. Other than that, it's not that big of a deal. So if you guys want to do that, you can definitely download it here. It's linked down in the description. Also, if you want to just use regular uh, 10 or 11, this process will work as well. It will, you can just go through the steps of doing the creation tool and stuff like that. So if you want to go that route, you can. You're going to want to create like a folder for all your stuff, the dependencies, everything else. Uh, the, the windows that you downloaded, depends on which one you downloaded. So that's going to play a role. It, I usually make folders specifically to that. Now, when it comes to this, if this doesn't pop up through your USB uh, drive and closer, you're going to want to click list all drives before you get started make sure you format the drive before you list it just in case just to play it safe so after you formatted it like go through the process of like clicking the list all drives everything basically on this is like the best method of installing windows this is what i do with all my devices so now all you have to do is go to select windows whatever you have downloaded that folder that you created i created the folder specifically for doing this kind of process i happen to have it in windows to go just because now all the all this stuff right here is going to play a role after you install windows so don't do any of this stuff yet just make sure you install windows i'm going to click on tiny 11 and if you are enjoying this video, give it a like. Uh, let me know what you think of it if, it, if I help somebody out in the comments. So now, all you have to do is just click Windows to go. And then, like I said, you selected it already. Just leave the rest of the stuff alone. And then, what you're going to want to do is make sure it's set to NTS. And then, optionally, you can name it. And also, you can ch change it to 2 gigs because I think it does use that. But I just usually just leave it at default. So after you have checked off everything, everything's basically set up, all you have to do is click start. 
Now, I'd recommend creating like a local account just to reduce like the, it basically cuts time in half when it comes to setting up this process. Also, you can click create local account as well. Optionally, it also helps along with the time. Also, it's gonna destroy everything on the drive, just a heads up, so if you have anything important, I pack it up first. So, now, if it's on the hard drive, this is gonna take a really long fucking time. On an SSD, it takes about maybe 10 minutes. On a hard drive, it's gonna take about an hour. Just a heads up. I will be back when this process has finished. And don't worry about the errors, just ignore them. All right, so 10 years later, if you're on a hard drive, 10 minutes later, if you're on an SSD, um, do not click start, by the way, because you're an idiot if you do that. Now, let's close everything out. If it errors out, don't worry about it. By the way, SnowRunner's on sale. That's So, in case you guys are curious, I don't know if it's on sale still, but when I bought it, it was on sale. Anyway, back to it. Now, what you're going to want to do is right-click, new, and then create, like, shortcut, and then you're going to want to type in command exe, so cmd.exe. This is a this will bypass the dynamic lock that it has for installing an operating system. Now, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to type in bypass dash system win eight, which means this is Windows eight. It will like bypass like the the Windows eight. So if you're on Windows ten and you run into this issue, it's Win ten. And by the way, you have to do this every single time you install an operating system. Next, type in dynamic capitalize lock so lock has to be all in caps and then dash eight so bypass dash system win eight win 10 if you're on windows 10 dash dynamic lock dash eight and what this will do is after you move it over if it works it will give you a like update this will pop up if it did work and then all you have to do is click continue and very important um, so that it's not like stuck so you you can actually eject the drive It will have problems trying to eject the drive safely a lot of times You don't even have to safely eject the drive by the way, but I'd recommend doing it So what you're gonna want to do is delete the previous command that was on your desktop so that you can actually safely eject it I'd like say that nine times more and if you did install or download all the Visual C++ files or the dependencies that I asked you to and put it in the save folder so you know where it's at, go ahead and copy that folder with all that stuff in it over to the internal drive. And do not mind me if I over explain shit, I have a habit of doing that. So anyway, you got all your stuff right here and all you have to do basically optionally you can create like a folder for your games. You can create like a folder for your physical games is what I recommend doing. I will go over that later when we get to the actual laptop or whatever laptop you have. You have an old Windows XP. Tiny 11 will definitely work or whatever operating system will work. So just a, as a warning, you could have problems still. All computers are different. There's a bunch of different hardware out there so if you run into any issues it, it it all depends on the type of computer you have so go ahead safely eject it we'll get to the next part now take your laptop put the hard drive or ssd if you got an ssd back into the machine whatever type of laptop you have or computer whatever and just go through the process of just putting everything back in place basically and then we'll get started on to the next part so once it's installed, uh, turn your computer on if you're on a hard drive. This will take like 10 years because of the processor I'm on. So just as a heads up, if you're on a low-end processor, this will probably take a little bit for you. If you're on an SSD, it, it could help alleviate the pain that you you be suffering with. So you're on a hard drive, just go take a shit, do whatever, uh, go take a piss, jack off, whatever works. But like it'll eventually get there. So... In general, all you have to do now that it booted up into Tiny11, just go through the whole traditional setup process of getting creating your name. If you haven't already clicked on create automatic local account, um, go ahead, click I don't have internet because that's important because uh, Tiny11 will automatically update as soon as you connect to the internet. So trust me, very important when it comes to that. So continue with limited setup, just go through the whole process. You guys probably already know. And by the way, in case you're on a handheld, the accessibility down in the corner, like I showed you earlier in this clip, you can bring up the keyboard that way in case you're on an RNG ally and you're trying to like set up Windows 11. You can see, I, trust me, I, I'll talk about it later. So go ahead, create a password and stuff like that if you already haven't clicked on the box to 
create local account so this will bypass all this all the stupid security question crap so anyway just go through the whole process and we'll get to the next part so after it's booted up tiny 11 is here to stay uh this is on the hard drive just heads up so it's pretty much very naked now remember all of like the stuff i told you to have like copied over so make sure you have that stuff first thing you're going to want to do though I always do this to help with like the performance, especially on the low end processor like this. This click best for per performance. You're gonna want to type in performance options and then this will pop up. Now, I want you guys to right click the desktop by the way and just take note of the fact that this resolution is grayed out. You can't change the resolution at all. Take note of that. It'll like come in like, I'll talk more about that later on how to fix that. Trust me, the, the files that I ask you to download will come in handy to fix to basically fix that. But before we even get started with installing all the files, I want to basically do a installation of Driver 3 to show you guys like you can play it without having to do very much but other than just the game and the, the operating system and the computer you have. So in general, pick up a hard copy of this game. It's worth it. All the data is on the disc. You do not need to install any dependencies or anything okay, just to make this game work. Yes, ironically, a PC game actually works without dependencies. So I'd recommend picking up a hard copy. If you have a disc drive or you have an external disc drive as well, I it's worth it. It's worth it to at least have it as a collecting item. It it literally plays unpatched. It It's nice. You know, it might be because it's a more updated version of Driver 3, but it's nice. By the way, this is tailored for those who want to like see this in action. So you, like I said previously, there are chapters. If you don't want to see this, you can go ahead and skip to the setting up part as well. This is tailored for those who, this entire video is tailored to those who want to actually do this type of thing to their laptop, their old school laptops or possibly compute, like desktop computer although i'm going to be doing some battery tests so it's mostly related to a laptop if you have a desktop computer you can do this too so anyway you're going to want to create like a folder called physical games inside your windows folder and you're also going to need to create like within the physical games folder uh driver three basically so go ahead create a folder called physical games and then create a folder called driver three and then point the mouse to that when it comes to asking you where you want to store the game very important because like what it's gonna do is keep it all nice and neat instead of having everything like like all over your desktop or in files it's complicated trust me i ran into that issue a couple times with this depending if you're on an ssd or a hard drive it could take longer on a hard drive but like as soon as the process is installed i will get to the next part so after it's done, it will ask you if you want to basically create a shortcut right after you click OK. And I'd recommend like creating a shortcut on the desktop, click finish. And now, like I said, this is just window. I didn't do anything at all other than install a hard copy of driver three. This window will pop up, by the way, just go ahead and close it out. Now, all you have to do is just click on the executable and it boots. Uh, like I said, DirectX will come in handy for a lower resolution. This is a low end this processor. So performance is going to be completely fucking ass without having the option to lower the resolution. So the entirety of the gameplay, except for right now, because it's plugged in because I'm in the setup process, it's going to be tailored to like on battery. Most of it's going to be on battery. So performance wise, it's going to look different um, in terms of having it plugged in. I have it set up basically. I'll explain more of that it, later on in the video on setting up for like playing it on the go or on battery because this thing does actually can like get, get about two hours. So now if you guys can, if you guys do enjoy my stuff, you guys are enjoying what I'm doing in terms of computers and related just st random stuff like this, please give this video a subscribe or like my channel subscribe if you do enjoy it. it i do a lot of this kind of stuff i do just random tech related stuff i used to be a racing only channel but i kind of want to span out other than racing i love racing games but other than that wanted to span it out now everything here it's like native res you can't change the resolution you can change like the graphic settings you can change like the the higher and and trust filter in case you're curious Trilinear is like a higher advanced version of like the antitrust filtering, so 
like going through and accepting it and then as you can see it's kind of laggy obviously so i'm gonna go to take a ride and show you guys like what i mean and this is why directx will come in handy to when in terms of like the game performance so booting into this and there you go like at maybe 10 frames you know like like i said it's a low end processor and you'll see what i mean the trick that i have so in case you guys are curious we're going to get on to the next part and how to improve the performance and get better better like battery life and everything else so we're on to the setup process of installing directed to everything else so enjoy so go ahead close the game out open up settings and then what you want to do is pin the settings to the taskbar that's going to play a role also when it comes to task manager there's going to be a lot of stuff you're going to want to pin to the taskbar so go ahead pin settings to the taskbar and then you're going to want to also like pin uh the task manager so go ahead type in task manager next and then just go ahead pin that to the task the taskbar i do this with all my computers because i want to be able to have access to this stuff Next, what you're going to want to do, very important before we connect to the internet, is you're going to want to go all the way down to Windows Update. Optionally, you can update Windows if you feel free to, but I usually just disable it because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm extending it for about four weeks just because. So just like pausing the Windows updates in general, uh, you're going to disable it through like the services as well. By the way, I'm going to be going through everything in this video. So now that you have it paused and like basically paused, so before we get started on the personalization you're going to want to go ahead and t type in services we'll go through the services you're going to need to disable a couple things i'd recommend pinning it to taskbar by the way because I, like it's just so so it's ready and available now uh before you actually get started uh, i'd recommend changing the background because it, after five minutes it will like give you a warning say you need to activate windows it's kind of a clever trick you can just like change it well before it starts activating it so go ahead and like go through your personalization you don't have to this is just an optional part you can like skip basically but like i'd recommend doing it i happen to like it dark so and also you're going to want to turn off the transparency effects because that's going to play a role in, in the battery life now now you're going to want to go to personalization by the way i had to cut some stuff out that's why you're seeing some transitions and then you're going to want to go all the way down to themes and this is where you can locate the desktop icons i don't fucking know why windows 11 or tiny well basically windows 11 general likes to hide the the most important stuff you're going to want to like check all the the stuff down below and uh it will pretty much help you like navigate windows 11 or tiny 11 a lot better like i said it's really fucking annoying why this shit is not enabled on startup but there you go that's how to enable it now when it comes to the task manager obviously the services is going to play a role as you can see the disk is pretty high so in general when it comes to this it will be very important now about the services like i said you're going to want to dis disable a few things now with tiny 11 it like the connected user and telemetry is already disabled it is where microsoft likes to spy on you and see what you're doing you you're in general you're going to want to disable that shit if it's not already disabled if you're on tiny 11 it's disabled by default the other things you're going to want to disable are not disabled by default so anyway this is going to affect your performance and disk usage if you're on a hard drive disk usage if you're on this you're not going to really have that much of a problem but you're going to want to disable this stuff anyway it's because like i said microsoft likes to spy on you anyway now the next thing you're going to want to disable is system main now this is always running in the background it even though it says it improves performance over, over time it really does not it actually decreases performance go ahead disable it and click buy and by the way you're going to want to stop it because like i said or i haven't said this before anyway i forgot to stop it as well you're going to want to stop the process so anyway same thing go to properties um click stop on it by the way because i didn't do that in this video i forgot to click stop on it um as you guys will see i go back and click stop on everything so the same thing with windows search disable it and then the very last one is the windows update if you do not want to update windows i would just make sure that it's disabled it, it it's not running at the moment but it it's literally usually on manual so when you update windows it 
performs its update so if you do not want to run into the issue of windows automatically updating you're going to want to disable that so if you have not stopped the processes already uh like i said like i said just go back make sure it has stopped just got to right click it and just stop the processes so we're going to continue on to the next part now now go ahead open up test manager to show that it actually works now look at your disk usage it's down it's a it's a lot better now now the computer performs a lot better i always do this across every device i own dude it, it like very 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 important the next part is also very important will help out a lot um anyway as you can see you're it's by default double click but what you're you're going to want to do is go to the control panel and then you're going to want to go to the file explorer options on the right after it loads up like i said it's on the or appearance and personalization and then file explorer options it's on a hard drive so that's why it takes a minute so you're going to want to switch it to single click and also like not every computer has a checkbox this will also come in handy it's optional if you want to go through all this but i'd recommend doing this click apply and click OK. Now, as you guys can see as a demonstration, if you do not want to entirely open the file, you just gotta click on the on the little box there. If you want to actually fully click on the file, it, it'll instantly open. I do this just because it's a lot more convenient. So, now, remember all of the Visual C++ files and also the DirectX files and stuff I asked you to like download well this is where it comes in handy so remember that resolution you cannot change at the beginning and also this is recorded in different ways so this is well before i installed driver 3 i just wanted to do like the driver 3 installation first okay so when it comes to the power plan and stuff like that like you're going to want to open up the control panel again you can skip you can like buy skip across this if you don't care for the sort of thing but although it will play a huge role in power to your life now take note that of the Create a power plan. We'll get to that next. Optionally, you can mess with this stuff here. Um, like, you don't have to, like, do anything here if you don't want to. I, like, but if you do want to go ahead and mess with the stuff, you can. Uh, I turn off the dynamic lock or the lock in general. So, optionally, you can come here, mess with the stuff, or you can come back later. Um, I'd recommend just, like, leaving it be. But if you want to mess with it, you can. Now, when it comes to the battery saving mode, Click on high performance because this is going to play a role. It will act like your default one. I happen to have the screen set to after five minutes. Um, if you want to do it for one minute, you can. Also, like when it comes to putting the computer to sleep, you can do that as well. Had to go back and rename it to game mode, by the way, because I made a mistake. Anyway, opening up this part right here, you can go through and what you're going to want to do is make sure that sleep wake up timers is not enabled you're going to also want to make sure that you have like additional settings set and also when it comes to the boost mode we'll get to that next make sure allow wake timers is disabled because that like it will randomly wake up in the middle of the night if you have the laptop in your bag or whatever you're going to want to like that's going to be a problem basically now, the Intel graphics plan, make sure it's set to maximum battery life on the battery and make sure maximum performance. See, now this will help with battery life a lot better or a lot more, basically. Everything else, just leave at default and click apply. So in general, I will go through all the process of setting up MSI Afterburner. The clips are all mixed up, so I will, I promise I will go through everything. So you're, you're gonna want to do the registry editor. This is with all the direct decks and everything installed already. So just a heads up, I will get to that next. So don't worry if you see anything out of place, just trust me, I got you, trust me. So what you're gonna wanna do is just go to HT local machine and you're gonna want to go ahead and select system. I made a mistake here. I don't see it. There's gonna be a bunch of mistakes in my videos. Go to system, go all the way down to current control set and then go all the way down to where it says power. By the way, I'd recommend moving this over to the right so that you have more room to see. And then anyway, back to what I'm talking about. Go all the way down to power. Like I said, I'm getting over being sick so it's kind of hard to talk. So anyway, go all the way down to power. Now there's gonna be a, another setting called power settings. That's also, that's gonna be the last one to expand. 
Actually, I lied. There's one more folder you're going to want to expand. So the first folder you're going to want to expand is 545-33251-4824-96C1-47B60B740D00. And then go ahead, expand that folder. And then you're going to, the next folder you're going to want to select instead of, uh, expanding is basically BE337238 0D82 4146 A960 4F3749 D470 C7. So I will be linking all this stuff down in the description in case you are curious and want to look, look at it yourself, but I always do this. This is what's making my video so long is me going in extreme detail like this. Anyway, now this is going to play a role in the battery setting. We haven't gotten to the part of doing that because I'm just basically uh, tr trying to locate it because, you know, like I said, during this time I was sick. I was extremely dizzy. Um, like I said, Idaho is dry as fuck, so it just completely killed my brain cells while I was down there. Anyway, now after you have selected the, the right one. Now go ahead and go up to attributes and then you're going to want to right click it and modify the config file. So go ahead, click right click it, click modify, and then you're going to want to change it from 1 to 0. I do this across all my computers for a reason. It's not really a, it's not diff too different from with the performance at all. It just affects like the heat and wattage that you're pulling from the battery. You'll gain basically a half hour battery life when you disable the shit it's on by default um optionally you can have it enabled on plugged in and disabled i don't know like from my experience it doesn't i don't see a performance difference other than i'm getting basically better battery life out of this machine so go ahead click on power performance just go follow along basically what i'm showing you on the screen like i said editing is a pain in the ass so you can have like the plugged in enabled optionally if you want it like i i think it might improve the performance when it's plugged in a little bit more i have it disabled like i'm completely on all my stuff from here at least on the laptop i have it enabled so this will improve a lot now remember that direct x i showed you guys make sure you sign into your wi-fi because you're going to need your wi-fi for this shows that it's off right now but you're gonna need to in general sign into your wi-fi now also you're gonna need the intel driver down in the description as well i happen to have everything backed up on my usb drive so i'm set i have all my steam deck drivers for windows and stuff like that my rg ally drivers you're gonna want like some t type of storage device just to have your stuff backed up um i happen to have all my stuff right here so like all the graphics drivers and everything is right here now with the intel the, it's linked down in the description as well. Everything is going to be linked down in the description. I know I've said that a million times. Editing is a pain in the fucking ass, dude. Like, especially when it comes to tutorials like this. So, if you guys can, give this video a like. It, it's optional. I'm not I'm not e-bagging or e-bagging. I basically kind of am. But still, like, give this video a like if you guys did enjoy it as well. If I helped help somebody at least. So, anyway, go through the process of installing the Intel driver you're on intel if you're on amd you're going to want to install that it'll help with performance so just slightly so go ahead go through the process of installing that we're going to get to the rest of the stuff here in a minute before we get started how to change password you just got to type in change password and then go to where it shows it up and then go ahead and type in your old password and then just click next and then click finish in case you don't want to deal signing in every single time it'll just automatically boot to the, the laptop so now I'm going to go ahead and speed past this um, before we get started. Go ahead, restart your computer after changing your password. That will play a role into like setting up the, everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and speed past this. All the Visual C plus files on the dependencies that you have backed up and saved and put onto your drive. We're going to go through this. Uh, make sure that you sign in with your password, by the way, because with DirectX, you're going to need to. I will make a video on on how to preserve DirectX and everything else later on, because I know how to do that. There's a method to doing that. Anyway, for right now, just do that. Make sure you have all your Visual C plus files, and then we're going to speed past this when we get to the next part.
So, remember when I said, like, open up the display settings well before we did all this and you, that, that resolution is grayed out? Also, it does enable, like, the sleep option as well. So, as a proof of concept, I'm going to open up the start menu. Now, you can put your device to sleep because of DirectX being installed. Now, go ahead, right-click your desktop, go to display settings. And as a proof of concept, now that resolution is not grayed out anymore. You are able to t put it in way lower resolution. So any game performance issues when it comes to this processor, you can definitely do that. It's kind of cool. Now it's in 4x3. So, like, say for instance, if you want to just keep it here, you can. Optionally, you don't have to, but, like, you can if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. You can also adjust the brightness. You were able to adjust the brightness anyway, but what it ended up doing was it ended up like putting a display driver for or a graphics driver on the integrated graphics in general. Also, the Intel driver plays a huge role in performance as well, so I'd recommend installing that. Now, we're going to go ahead and speed past this again of installing all the Visual C++ files and we'll get to the next part. All right, so MSI Afterburner is next. Link down in the description for this. I use this on every one of my devices, especially the ROG Ally. This will also play a part on this laptop, trust me, because you're gonna want to cap your frame rate. Now, create a folder within like the, just create a, a random folder where you want to like install RTSS and also MSI Afterburner. So go ahead, create like a folder for both of them separately. The reason why is because you're going to want to locate the RTSS folder. And also you're going to want to, or the, the file that you're going to need to cap the frame rate. You're also going to obviously need it for both of MSI Afterburner and Art Reva Tuner. That's what it is. My bad. Reva Tuner. So go ahead, create a folder for both MSI Afterburner and Art Reva Tuner so that for Reva Tuner, you will be able to locate it easier if you have it set to a different folder. So we're gonna go ahead and speed past this and we'll get to the next part again. And make sure it installs in the, to the folders that is that you created. So after that, this is basically, make sure it starts with Windows, um, you, like the game overlay, Xbox game overlay doesn't work for shit at, upon startup unless you wanna update Windows fully. So, in case you don't want to do that, like, just go ahead and go through the, what you want to have on screen, but you have to literally click on them and then click the little box, and then it, it will work, but make sure you click apply. Also, very, very important, like, just enable everything here that you need. Uh, if you want to have, like, CPU usage, GPU usage as well, it will be on the display this is a very, very, very cool app. But like I said, I use this across my devices. So GPU usage, very important to fucking take note so that you, you'll know that you're not bottlenecking. and go ahead and click apply and then click OK. And then there you go. Now that it's set up, uh, I'd recommend going to the on screen thing as well. Uh, also, like click any random key that you want to use to bring up this prompt like the overlay for like the FPS and everything else. If you want to do that, you can. There's a bunch of options here. It's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I use this across all my devices. It's a very convenient app to use so that you know like how much GPU, CPU and everything else. I'd recommend doing this. So it's a very, very cool app. I know I keep bragging about it. I'm gonna shut the fuck up basically. So. Now that you created that folder where that is, you can also pin this to the desktop. So it's this is where how you cap your frame rate. This is what I use all the time. I don't use any other frame rate limiter other than this. Um, also, restarting the app will also help with a lot of the issues that it has. So go ahead, open it up, and you're going to want to cap it to 30 FPS. Make sure it starts with Windows as well. So all you have to do is type in the whatever frame you have, you 60 or 30, I recommend doing 30, and then just click enter right after, and then there you go. So you can just do whatever frame rate you, you want. Now, we're gonna get to now the next part. So as a proof of concept, booting into driver three, we're gonna go to the video settings. Now it's at the lowest resolution. I'd recommend leaving it there. Like I said, it's, it depends on how powerful your uh, integrated graphics is on your, on your machine. 
obviously go through the various methods of like setting up controls recommend you do that because the current control set of driver 3 is fucking awkward and i would not recommend playing it this way so go through and change the controls however you want it does support controller but it's complete dog water with controller and we'll show you some gameplay now that driver 3 does run a lot better when it's unplugged it's around 22 to 20 fps also when it's plugged in it will be past 30 or about up to 60 so when it the method that i showed you guys with the battery saving mode it does cut the performance in half but you're getting about two hours you can optionally play it full performance you're going to get about the same frame rate you're just going to get about four, like about one hour battery life and you basically don't want that. The rule of thumb for me is if it's two hours or more, then it's considered good. Now, before we get straight into the gameplay part, I'm going to show you a speed test between an SSD versus a hard drive with a Tiny 11. So I'll be doing that next. I'm not going to be talking anymore, so I'll finally shut the fuck up. Yay, finally, Alex finally is shutting the fuck up. And then it'll just be gameplay right after. So if you guys are new to my channel, you haven't subscribed already, and just give it, just like, go ahead, make sure that if you do like my videos and subscribe, if you don't like it, I wouldn't recommend subscribing. Like I said, I like to do various things with computers. So when it comes to this, also tutorials that last up to about one hour, which is probably what this video is gonna wind up being. And I'm very sorry about that. Like I said, I included the chapters for that reason so anyway like i said enjoy the speed test with windows 10 and the various clips and also the battery life as well well uh hint hint you get about two hours and 20 minutes out of this thing so on battery so it's cool little computer um it, like this video is only tailored to those who actually want to take their like old laptops and just run various games on them the best method i do have for you guys is basically this like i said oftentimes i'm getting 60 out of this but like i said when it's on battery mode you'll get about 28 to 30 frames so anyway like i said enjoy the clips enjoy the speed test and enjoy like the, the gameplay and i will see you guys on the next video i'll be working on my uh, airport video next hope you guys enjoy and peace
Kids, 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 kids,